Camtasia 2024 was released last week, and here's what's new in Camtasia 2024. Now, they've got some new features here, like dynamic captions, and these are captions that we've been asking for years and years and years. And as a Camtasia Windows user, I was hoping that they would kind of just have them uh, in the captions option and just have some styles in the properties. By the way, did this, you still have the captions uh, options that is to import SRTs and so on and so forth, and also dynamic captions. And these are really awesome, especially uh, if you want to create Alex Hamosi style kind of Mr. Beast kind of captions for your videos with words highlighting and so on and so forth. They do have their limitations and these are things I'm going to cover in another tutorial and I wish they'd kind of make it a little bit easier to work with. Uh, so it's really uh, a little bit he hectic if I may say so. Now, we've got Rev Workflow Enhancements and uh, you can send both new and existing media through Rev Workflow for quick layouts option. This is one of the features that I like about Camtasia. Now, I'll show you how it works. So, you now have this option called import Camtasia to Rev. If I click on this, you can import videos or you can import recorded, uh, th that is T-Rec, uh, Camtasia recordings. So if I click on this and then click on open, see what happens. And this also has a slight limitation that I'll mention in a minute. Now, when you do that, uh, everything is going to populate. Let's just minimize everything here. What happens is because I have done a Camtasia recording, you'll see uh, the size that you want to work with, either the recording size, a wide size, vertical, that is what it looks like, square. Let's go to the recording size, or maybe something like this, a wide. Or actually, let's go with the recording size. Now, you can also choose now a layout, and this was available back then. Uh, let's say we go with something like this. I like something with a circle, talking head, and then I don't think there's anything else I'll choose there. The background, if you want to have a background, you can have this available. Uh, if that is something that you're into and this is what you're getting here, you can also add different backgrounds depending on the videos you're creating. Effects, uh, by default, you have a couple of uh, effects added, drop shadow, corner rounding, and so on and so forth. And please note that this is for Camtasia recordings. For videos, you'll not have things like uh, the cursors and so on and so forth. Uh, but this is really, really handy uh, to have this. And then we've got some filters. Uh, if you want to add some filters here and there, really depends on what uh, you really want uh, right inside there. But one key feature missing here is something like saved presets or maybe saved styles that you like to use and reuse over and over again. So if you're importing or, or if you want to improve your workflow, you have to always click or re-enter everything or reselect everything the way you want it to be. If there was an option here, it would be awesome to be able to save uh, the rev style somebody has chosen uh, and reuse it over and over again. It would just be one click and everything is set up the way you want it to be. So once you're done, you can either export this as a video or edit in Camtasia. So let's say we edit in Camtasia. And the reason why I've done this is so that you can see that the different options that you apply. Uh, let's see, let's remove this marker. Delete the marker. So let's say for this particular video, you'll see that if you scroll down here, you'll see uh, different options available like a mask. Uh, that is an oval uh, mask. Uh, we've got a drop shadow and everything that has been added, a color lot. Let's remove this. All right, again, I get back everything. So if you mistook and added something, you can always remove it in the editing process. Uh, maybe we go for this one. Let's see what has been done for this one. Let's say we remove the drop shadow. Let's say we remove the corner rounding. So you see, you get back your square and then the scale is at 80%. Let's say we go with 100%. And then you move it so that it fills up everything. You can still get a hold of your footage. Uh, control Z, just bring it down here where you want it to be. Make it a little bit smaller uh, in that particular selection. And just have it where you want it to be. There's a ton of things that you can do. But having 
the rev option to import old footages is a real game changer especially if you want to improve your workflow edit your videos faster uh, even for your clients so uh, that's a plus but i wish there was an option right inside the rev interface to save styles or presets that somebody uh, commonly uses uh, that would be really really awesome uh, next up we've got some assets integration and uh, right inside here you'll see the Camtasia assets uh, a ton of things here uh, right inside here so you no longer need to go on to Camtasia website to actually download everything that you want uh, to work with they're just right inside here all you need to do is just get a hold of it drag it and it's going to download and be available for you to use whenever you want to use it uh, we also got a new record engine uh, you can capture higher frame rates and higher resolution screen recordings and it's powered by a new screen recording engine uh, this is highly welcome as well uh, i'm not going to show you that because it's going to interfere with my uh, camtasia recording because i'm using an older version of camtasia to record this and then we've got text stroke you can add an outline to any text change the color size and opacity of that outline uh, so this is something that you can use uh, right inside here let's say we go and you can see they are ready presets just add that you can see now you have a stroke uh, that you can work with uh, right inside there uh, you can reduce the opacity of the stroke but one thing that is not possible to do is to make this by default let's say we increase the size slightly uh, let's say we want to leave the stroke only uh, a few ways to navigate this is by kind of just adding uh, let's see this remove color effect to this and then you just select let's say like this red and we've got the ABC uh, as a transparent just a stroke working for you uh, I wish there was an option to just do that from the stroke section here where if you don't want anything that is the color red well, let me see yeah I don't think so unless they have a transparent option maybe unless we have a transparent option right inside here uh, to actually work with but I don't think it's available uh, but yeah you can now have text with strokes uh, highly appreciated and a highly requested feature over the years people had uh, circumnavigated that by duplicating text and doing a lot of things but this is highly welcome uh, we've got uh, a tiling visual effect create custom animated backgrounds with a logo name image or video uh, repeated in a pattern across your screen added flexibility to change sizes and spacing and we can see that let's say we add uh, let's say we actually add something like an image let's go to an annotation here just a bold just add this circle uh, once we add that we can actually go to visual effects and then uh, if you're up here just scroll down and you'll see the tiling you can just drag and drop it right there and what it's going to do is just going to kind of duplicate everything here and uh, you can do a ton of things you can change kind of the orientations of whatever you have here I uh, change where they are I move this slightly again and uh, so on and so forth you can also I believe add some animations uh, let's say we see if we can get this to tilt right scale let's just bring it down let's see if it works yeah something like that so it's really really awesome to have this uh, you can as they've mentioned you can create custom animated backgrounds with a logo image video repeated pattern across your screen so it has flexibility to change sizes and spacing and let's see if i click on it let's scroll down so this this kind of nothing and then underneath it but obviously uh, as you've seen you can change a ton of things right inside here including the scale opacity and so on and so forth and create your own effects uh, use the behaviors animations to create whatever you want to create uh, in uh, Camtasia 2024 uh, and then we've got progress bars and timers show time progression with ease to modify bars and countdown timers so I believe this ones have been updated as well 
I'm not sure if they're in the assets right here. So we've got audio visualizations right there, but I believe in the library, Camtasia 2024, we should have a uh, timer somewhere here. Yeah, counters, we've got some counters here. Yeah, there's a ton of things here uh, that you can actually work with. Uh, but that's all for you to kind of check out and see if what they have really works for you. In Camtasia 2024, we also have some feature updates and this include visual enhancements and there are dozen of new behaviors, dynamic backgrounds and audio visualizers. Uh, we also have cursor enhancements where you can make a static screenshot look like a video by adding a mouse cursor, then changing its position and adding clicks. Additional cursor effects include the ability to scale cursor clicks or add a glow around the cursor. Uh, some of these are still there available. Uh, and then we have JKL editing enhancements. Speed up your video editing. JKL brought the ability to play the video preview at slower, J, or faster, speed, L. And you can now slow down, shift J, speed up, shift L without pausing K in between. Editor shortcuts, new shortcut options to speed up your video editing uh, workflow. I believe they should be telling us what these new shortcuts are, but you can kind of go check them out. We also have toolbar reordering. This is highly welcome. Now, uh, the fact that uh, you can actually be able to reorder your commonly used uh, functionalities and so on and so forth. Let's say we go with that, behaviors or whatever uh, you're working on. Let's bring this down a little bit. It seems you cannot take captions up there. Let's say we click on that. No, you cannot take captions up here. That's a bummer. I wish it was possible to take the captions up here because these are actually going to be really uh, useful, especially in dynamic captions. But you can now reorder, uh, for example, your mostly uh, used uh, effects or whatever. So uh, very rarely will I use the voice of a narration, uh, but as for the rest, I kind of highly use them. Uh, so that is something I can say is an improvement. And then speech to text closed captions, win only, that is Windows only. There's a new AI technology that turns the audio of your video into closed captions on your video. Uh, um, they should actually tell us what this AI technology is. Uh, in a way, I feel like they're using OpenAI's Whisper, uh, but I hope uh, we'll get something to kind of let us know what is there. So they fixed an issue showing wrong duration when adding an extended frame to the end of the media. That was the bug fix. Uh, so the speech text, uh, if you go to captions here, speech to text, it's transcribing uh, whatever is going on and you'll get this. Uh, now, I don't know why they always say ADA compliant, but this text is just too much uh, for somebody to actually consume in one sitting uh i hope one day they do the following see the way they have this option here and leave all the properties section without anything they just move everything on this side and then add different options where we can actually uh, make selections let's assume it's this particular block i'm working on i can make different selections maybe add the subtitles up here if there's any uh any uh, graphics being obscured down here. Also, uh, the possibility to actually set, let's say you go to this speech to text before everything happens, you can be able to set the characters you want per line, the number of lines you want, uh, and then different background options that are available. It would be really awesome. And also from there, they can actually just create that. You can actually convert what you work on as an SRT into a dynamic caption style like they have introduced here. So that will be really handy in future. Uh, but those are some of the few things uh, that are also available as feature updates uh, in uh, Camtasia 2024. Now, I'm sorry to say that I'm really disappointed in this particular update because probably the two relevant things that I would really work with is just dynamic captions and the rev workflow. The rev workflow is uh, missing like uh, saving our presets or styles that we can actually reuse over and over again. 
Uh, as for dynamic captions, let me show you how they work. I'm actually going to remove all the media here. Just go back here and uh, let me just drag and drop a video uh, right inside here. So I've got this video right inside here. Uh, just remove all empty tracks and I can actually enlarge this slightly. Now, just a video with a voiceover right inside here. To use the dynamic captions uh, option, you need to click on more. If it's not available, click on captions. And on Windows, you have the options for captions where you can add a caption or use the gear icon to import captions, sync captions, export captions, or use a speech to text engine. They've also mentioned that the speech to text engine has also been improved. It's powered by AI. So I'll have to test it out and see. But now we have this new option here. It's called dynamic caption style. And by default, you have a couple of presets available for you and this indicates like uh, the type of font they're using uh, and so on and so forth so they are about one two three four five six seven eight about eight default uh, dynamic caption styles in Camtasia 2024 at the time of recording this video now if you actually get what you want here you can always customize it but you can see by hovering over you'll see what effect you get with the different captions uh, that uh, you want uh, to use. Let's say we look at this one and for it to work, all you need to do is just drag it to the timeline. Once I do, you'll see a circle down here and it's automatically transcribing what is going on and applying the captions onto our clip. If I play this, in this tutorial, you can see that everything is lining up as required and we can just move this to the side. Mario, I'll show you how to use the scripts and so now uh, here are a ton of things you can do. If I click on this, uh, you can navigate to this side to change a couple of things and also the font selection right here. So here you have the dynamic caption option. You highlight powered or you turn it off. You can select the fill, the opacity, and then you have a ton of things, the stroke, what the future word looks like. That is the opacity. Let's say past, you can reduce the opacity or future, you reduce the opacity. Depends on what you're working with. You can use the reset button, uh, the word background. And let's say we go with something milder like that. The scale of that particular wrapping. Let's reset it. And the time, how long I believe it kind of takes to move across. Let's just reset that. And we've got uh, maybe a scale how it scales out. In a way, it would be awesome to have this, but sometimes it's going to kind of interfere with a ton of things that are actually going to be happening. So I wouldn't highly recommend it unless you're doing quick social media videos with no clear interruption or obscuring of uh, the other text that's available in there. You can also have a background uh, right inside here uh, for everything that you're working with. Uh, let's say we go with, uh, let's say black or something. Uh, where is a black? Yeah, I think a black would do. Hmm. Opacity, yeah, the opacity was down to zero. So the radius uh, or whatever, you can make it rounded. Let's just reset this, but that's where you get the background. And the good thing now with dynamic captions is that you can add transitions. That is, let's say we go with whatever. Let's say radio swirl spin. You can see already the captions are spinning. So if I go to the start and play this. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use. It's really, really awesome to be able to do all that. Uh, and let's assume you've created something that you like. And this is what I mentioned when it comes to Camtasia Rev, the ability to save the style. Now, if I like what I've uh, made and I want to reuse it over and over again, I can just come to the plus icon here and it's going to save right inside here. Uh, with whatever I've actually uh, worked with or worked on right inside here. And let's see, it should be, yeah, it should be this one, the one that I've created. And you can see a small face here because it shows with uh, the different uh, transitions and so on. You can actually right click on it and rename it. My default style, if it's something that you like, and you can always see it here. So 
if let's assume you delete this and want to reuse it uh, later, just grab it, drop it right there. And because we've already uh, made uh, captions for this, it's going to be added automatically. In this and you can see it's really, really simple. Now here's where the problem comes in. The problem comes in in that number one, it's not possible to kind of see where, let's say, this particular line changes or doesn't change. It would be really awesome to kind of make the dynamic captions look more like SRT subtitle files where you can easily see uh, where the caption ends or does not end. Now, the other problem. So you can see if you scroll here, you can see the option called dynamic caption transcript. Now, I find that this is really limited for this space and for you to view and edit these captions, you need to click on the audio and it's going to show you the dynamic caption script. Now, the other problem comes in is if you want to line up a word with what is being said. Now, this is not possible because you don't know where the caption word is. So it's really, really chaotic to kind of get this streamlined the way you want it to be. So it would be awesome if the dynamic captions acted more like SRT subtitle files that you can add different styles to. Uh, so my two big deal breakers is having this as a block and then having the caption transcript as just one word, one word, one word kind of stuff. It should be something that you can easily work with and also finally be able to export this as an SRT file. I'm not really sure you can do that. I've not seen anything uh, of that sort. Uh, I've not seen uh, the option to export this as, uh, uh, as an SRT subtitle file. It's really chaotic, but obviously an SRT subtitle file will not maintain the styling and all that. But it would be awesome if you actually worked on something here and you want to upload it on maybe a different website just for the SRT uh, subtitle purposes, it should be available to us without the need for retranscribing. Now, uh, I'm also finding this to be extremely vague, supports many different languages. It should be clear what languages are affected or what languages are supported. Now, this would be really, really awesome. Uh, I also have to say that the reason why I'm also disappointed with this release, it's easily shown by what they have on uh, their channel. Ever since they released Camtasia 2024, they've only done like four tutorials. And this is about uh, like it was released like six, seven days ago. It should be on last week, Tuesday. Now, they've only released the animate word by word captions, this one add dynamic captions and then we have generate closed captions in Camtasia windows and they have how to use a, uh, a template in Camtasia. Now there are three tutorials focusing on captions. I'll be very honest adding dynamic captions you can do it with free applications like CapCut. You don't really need to pay uh, a ton of money for Camtasia and when I mentioned paying they've moved from the perpetual kind of license to uh what is it called uh to a subscription based model uh let's say we go to learn more uh and this i'm not so sure because the features are extremely limited uh for let's say compare plans uh let's see because personally i don't think i can recommend camtasia unless you're doing maybe SCOM related content, but guess what? For the bare bones of Camtasia, for 179 USD, you'll just get the basics, screen and camera recording, powerful video editing, instant stylized layouts that is available in, uh, that is using Rev and so on and so forth, uh, Camtasia Rev. Now, if you want to take advantage of uh, text-based video editing, then what they've done is they've combined Camtasia and Audit, another product that they have. Now, here are my thoughts. I think Audit was not selling as much because why would people be spending like 30 bucks or whatever amount it was on per month to get this? But now, if you want to get this too, you need to go for 249 per year. This is extremely, extremely expensive uh, to actually work with. You'd rather even get DaVinci Resolve that is the DaVinci Resolve Studio. 
at almost the same price and it has all these features locked in probably uh, maybe just gets a couple of scripts from people that sell or people that issue for free to get the dynamic captions features and so on and so forth uh, or let's let me actually just say this get filmora 13 it has all these for maybe uh, a yearly price of about 69 usd you can buy for almost four years uh, that is filmora now i'm not bashing camtasia i love camtasia but i feel uh, the kind of uh, plans and pricing they have they seem to be exorbitant for the current market and there are a ton of video editing tools that are doing probably more than what you will get with this uh, if you want all this, pay $4.99, limited time offer. Camtasia, Audit, Assets, whatever, and everything that you see here. Uh, for this one, you also get voices and so on and so forth. Now, personally, uh, I don't really think uh, there's any need to uh, kind of buy the yearly plans uh, for all that. I believe they still have uh, the maintenance plans available. Uh, for those who have Camtasia uh, and they're going to end on October 1st but they'll support them for the next five years that is if you want to keep using the Camtasia bare bones without the text-based editing and so on and so forth you can still continue using it uh, uh, for now and I personally feel it's getting a little bit harder to decide do you use Camtasia do you use Descript? Do you use Filmora? Because one of the features that was lacking in Filmora is multi-track video screen recording. They now have it in Filmora 13. So how would you recommend Camtasia over Filmora? The interfaces kind of look the same. You get a, lo a lot more for, let's say, quarter the price for, uh, that is, the cam uh, the cam depending on the version of Camtasia you want. So it's it's really difficult to kind of recommend Camtasia to anyone uh, when the applications or programs like Filmora or even Descript. Uh, Descript does a ton of things. Uh, now, my thought is that I wish they did the dynamic caption transcript much, much better. Actually, my thought was, this is what my thought was. Uh, for Windows, they just leave us with these captions. But now, from this side uh, right here, you can be able to apply different dynamic caption styles. It would have made things easier. You have your transcripts right inside here. You can edit the words uh, when they appear because with captions or SRT files, they are actually subdivided here. You can still export them and so on and so forth. But I feel it's, it's really, really difficult. Uh, maybe just a quick pointer again. You can add more than one dynamic caption style, which is really awesome, especially if you're working with multi-speaker kind of uh, uh, videos. And if you actually just drag and drop, it's going to be available instantly because you've already transcribed this initially and the subtitles are ready. And now, uh, something else I think that th uh, this particular comes in, I can actually split this. I can actually split this, but this would be a lot of work to do. And let's say I remove the initial one, delete go back so in the beginning you get this in this tutorial i'll show you how uh, and let's say we remove this or actually just uh, let's say we cut somewhere here that's why i'm saying it's difficult to know where to cut it's going to be time consuming uh, when you want to actually do this uh differently uh just do a ton of things here and then for this one delete this and during this particular section, let's go back here, split that, zoom in slightly, just uh, kind of split that, delete, uh, go back to the start, and let's see uh, how it looks like. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to use Descript's eye contact feature to simulate eye contact with the camera even when you're reading from a script. Welcome to this video. My name is David and I hope you're well. So you see, it's kind of really awesome that you can actually have a ton of styles right inside here. If you're working with uh, multi speakers, it's really easy to work with all this and different caption styles and so on and so forth. I'm not so sure if it's possible to group them. 
control G. Yes, you can group them, but you only have the group properties available. I'm not sure you can save this as they are in dynamic caption style. So uh, that's also another deal breaker if you actually create different styles like that, uh, but you can actually use them separately as I uh, have indicated uh, initially control Z. And there we have the dynamic caption styles. But that's Camtasia 2024. Uh, to me, uh, it's more or less, if I may say this, not the best of updates I would be expecting. There are a ton of things available in Filmora, CapCut, which is free, Descript, uh, that will probably even be cheaper uh, in the long run. Uh, and Camtasia, unless you're creating maybe SCOM content or probably you don't want to come move from Camtasia because you love it, that's the only time I'd say you use it. Uh, but that's what's new in Camtasia 2024. Sorry if I have been ranting a lot about what I don't like but I have to say it as it is. So thank you for watching this video. Until next time, stay safe and never stop learning.